Well, police in Ferguson, Missouri, and really the entire town is settling down as protesters take their fight from the streets to the courts. They are suing the police there for $40 million, claiming their rights were violated as they peacefully protested the fatal police shooting of 18-year-old Michael Brown. Let's talk about it with our legal panel today. Former prosecutor Dan Shore is with us, along with criminal defense attorney Tanya Miller. Uh, the charge is that these, uh, these protesters didn't evacuate a McDonald's fast enough. Uh, the police, they say, used excessive force. They want $40 million. Tanya, do they have a case? Well, I, I think it's a little more complicated than that, to be honest with you, John. These are several different protesters, and their complaints are really kind of varied. Yes, the McDonald's situation is, is in the complaint, and that's one of the, the more obvious ones, but there were also allegations of uh, the police using uh, tear gas on peaceful protesters, the police firing rubber bullets at people who are doing nothing more than exercising their First Amendment uh, rights to protest. I do think that there is a very valid claim here, a Section 1983 action is often used by citizens to hold the police accountable when they go too far. Ultimately, the question of damages will be decided later. And sure, in a complaint, they always shoot for the moon. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they'll get. Sometimes they get more, sometimes they get less. But what's most important about this complaint is that it is bringing to the forefront um, the, the excessive force that we all saw play out on TV. The citizens are taking an action to try to bring uh, the police and hold the police accountable for that. Um, you know, Working in television, though, Dan, you know, I, I know that the camera can only see a certain mm -hmm. amount. And, and sometimes, yes, there were what appeared to be examples of excessive use of force, but you don't always know what preceded it or what was happening to the left or the right of the camera's field of view. Right, and the civil suit is actually a good forum to investigate this because there's a lot of allegations out there. People from the very beginning, from the first shooting, have been jumping to conclusions without knowing all the evidence. It's really important that in a court of law or through a formal fact-finding process, there's a full investigation of the original shooting and how the police dealt with the protesters. The right to protest is critical in our country, but it's also important that the protests be nonviolent and that the police have to keep the, the public safe. And they have to, there's a fine line between keeping people safe but not going overboard and doing unlawful things to the protesters. So through a civil suit, there will be evidence brought forward, there will be questioning, there will be discovery, maybe more video will be analyzed, and maybe we'll come to an outcome and a decision on each particular incident that's logical and thorough rather than people just seeing video on TV and jumping to conclusions. I think the $40 million number is high and excessive, but that is common in civil suits to throw out a high number. It's yeah. good that this is going forward in a formal way. Yeah. Let's move on now to the woman that uh, we've called the serial stowaway. Marilyn Hartman is her name. She keeps getting busted trying to sneak past airport security. She actually boarded a flight in California without a ticket. Now she's in jail and awaiting a court date. I believe we have some of what she talked, uh, what she said to a local reporter about why she's in jail. Listen. My question is, why has the government allowed me to get past security points? So why is the government allowing that to happen, portraying me as a um, potential threat to security as opposed to addressing another issue? Says she's actually a canary in the coal mine for the TSA, probing airport security. Tanya, what do you think? Well, I, I don't know if that's what she meant by that, but certainly I think the takeaway should be for airport security that maybe they need to debrief her. Maybe they need to figure out what it is that this seemingly sweet, innocent, older lady who potentially has some mental health issues um, knows that they don't about their security. Look, we're living in a time where there are all kinds of threats out here, domestic and abroad. Our airports have to be safe, and the fact that she keeps eluding security actually getting on an airplane and stowing away, uh, flying from one jurisdiction to another is extremely problematic. It does put you in the mindset of some of those teenage hackers that sort of sit in the basement and can crack security codes and then the CIA call them in and, and they become analysts yeah. for the government. Perhaps she does need to be consulted. But Dan, she's also been told to stay away from airports and she keeps violating that, that order and that's why she's in jail now.
Right. There's two very different issues. One is this particular woman getting her the help she needs and making sure she doesn't do this again. And then the wider issue of how is she able to bypass security and what can we learn about our airport security in general to stop other people who may have more evil intentions who may be trying to violate airport security, stopping those people. All right. Dan Shore, Tanya Miller, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. It has happened.